Okay. Hello, everybody. Because this session is going to be called Getting Started Developing Tropo Applications. Um, who's heard of Tropo? Okay, good. There's a few of you here. Very good. Um, so uh, my name is Phil Belanti. Uh, I'm the developer evangelist for the Tropo business unit. I actually came over in the Tropo acquisition uh, that was May of 2015. So been part of Cisco for a little while. Um, when Tropo was first acquired, it, there was about 45 of us, so we were a, a pretty small organization. Um, and uh, so this is like the, actually the first real big company that I've worked for. So it's been quite an adventure <laughs> since the uh, acquisition. But uh, I do a lot of their developer outreaches, a lot of like hackathons and things like that, uh, partner trainings, uh, get people to you know start trying out coding even if they've never coded before. Tropo makes it really, really easy. So uh, some of the things I'm going to be showing you today, or a lot of it, it's going to be showing you code. But it's so easy, it's, it's kind of human-readable code. Uh, so hopefully, this if you haven't tried Tropo yet, this will give you some confidence to go out and try it on your own. Uh, everything is free for developers, which is great. So you know, again, we try to make it very easy for developers to get going. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, you know incoming calls, outgoing uh, applications, you know uh, applications that text message you or send calls to your phone, uh, transfers, call control, you know manipulating caller ID, recording, text messaging, conferencing, um, just some more advanced speech concepts and uh, things like that. So let's jump into it. Okay, so firstly, uh, I guess it, easy way to describe Tropo, uh, it's the automation of telecom. You know, we're giving the power to web developers to build and deploy real-time communication applications. So now you can easily embed, you know, uh, voice calls and SMS into an existing business process or application. Uh, you know, or you can have a standalone application that just says makes a bunch of outbound calls or sends a bunch of outbound text messages. You know, maybe you want to build in an inbound IVR so you can unload calls off of uh, human agents so they answer some frequently asked questions. You know, so you can kind of do an automated bot uh, over the phone. You know, so you can handle uh, you know some calls uh, before they actually make it to an agent. Uh, and the reason uh, we kind of started Tropo is uh, old-style te uh, telephony development was really difficult. You know, we back in the day, you're talking about running a bunch of copper wire some places, or you know, a little bit more uh, down the road than you were talking about maybe learning a lot of like proprietary analog protocols, which can get really unwieldy and are very complicated and complex. Uh, so what we wanted to do is, yeah put an abstract layer over all that complicated telephony stuff, let us handle that inside our cloud, and allow the developers to do what they do best, which is just build applications. And uh, you know, we do this with two things. Very simple verbs, so we already know what they mean. So when we want to call somebody, we use the call verb. You know, we want to ask a caller a question, we can use the ask verb. Transfer the call, transfer. So again, verbs, they do exactly what they mean. And we use uh, the most popular web development la languages today. So web developers don't have to relearn some proprietary web uh, or XML markup or something like that. Um, so the, uh, you know, the, the learning curve is much less. Speed to market is, uh, is much better. So JavaScript, uh, Ruby, Groovy, Python, which is real popular amongst the Cisco folk. Uh, these are you know, all languages that are uh, you know, already widely used today by web developers. Mix in with those simple verbs, and that's what Tropo is all about. So here, just kind of a little representation of uh, the different languages. Um, here, they all, all those applications are just doing the same thing, picking up a phone call, saying hello world uh, in a computer voice, and then hanging up the call. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's talk more about uh, incoming calls. So when I say incoming calls, uh, you're taking your phone and you're dialing a phone number, and it's going to be uh, uh, hitting a Tropo application. That's where the uh, endpoint is. Or uh, you're sending a text message to a Tropo application. So here's a little 
uh, visual representation of that. You know, you, you have a phone call that starts out in the PSTN network. Uh, tr uh, Tropo applications, you can assign regular telephone numbers to them. So if that phone number is associated with a Tropo application, you know, our scripting environment will find that app. And if it needs to fetch something from your web server, maybe you have some audio files that it's going to play, or you know, maybe you wanted to fetch some, something from a database uh, so you can get, like, in a doctor's office, uh, you know, maybe they have a, a list of, uh, you know, of patients or something like that so they can get their name. Uh, so these are, uh, uh, they can do a simple HTTP request to get that into our cloud. Uh, but that's uh, essentially how an inbound call would work. So some of the uh, applications that our customers are building for inbound, uh, like I mentioned, uh, you know, a basic IVR or, or an auto attendant, you know, press one for sales or say sales. We have speech recognition available as well. So it could be a touchstone key presses. It could be just by speech recognition. Uh, we have uh, 80 different uh, languages available in text-to-speech and speech recognition. So you probably would be hard-pressed to find many languages we do not support there. Um, uh, surveys, you know, after-call survey, after they take with an agent just to make sure that they, you know, got a good customer service. Or, you know, maybe after they visited your place of business, you wanted to make sure uh, that they were satisfied with uh, uh, the service that they did get there. So you can do like a post-call survey or, or polling, which is real popular during election seasons. You know, they send out these polls just to see who you're going to vote for. Uh, so those are really popular as well. So again, three lines of code. Answer the phone. Say, welcome to Tropo, and then hang up. But really, since that application is only really doing one thing, it's just saying, welcome to Tropo, you know, it, it's going to implicitly uh, answer the phone anyways. And since the uh, application doesn't do anything after saying welcome to Tropo, uh, it's going to hang up too. So really, you only need one line of code, and this application would work. So if you just wanted to play some sort of static message to your callers, you can do that in one line of code. It can also just play an audio file. So instead of just putting in a, you know, a bunch of words uh, that a computer is going to speak, uh, you could just put a URL in there to where you're hosting uh, an audio file, like an MP3 or a WAV file. Uh, very easily, you could just uh, put in that thing, and it would render, uh, render the audio file right uh, in our data centers and play it over the phone. Now, again, I mentioned a survey. So if you want to ask a caller a question. So here you kind of see that we're declaring a variable named result. So now we're, and then we're using the ask verb. What's your favorite color? Choose from red, blue, or green. So now we have an argument here for the ask verb choices. Red, blue, or green. You know, we don't have to do any big loops or anything like that. We're just giving them the choices right there. Uh, we can even put another argument there say it's an attempt. So we'll give them, you know, a few different attempts to do a choice if they didn't know how to say red, blue, or green for whatever reason. Uh, and then we're calling back up that variable over here. So you said, and now uh, whatever you spoke. So if I called it and I said blue, it would, this application would just repeat back to me, you said blue. And then here we have a log uh, that we're going to be uh, putting in the, uh, the utterance from the caller, and we're going to log it down there. Or if you want, you could send it to a database or something like that. So you know, if you do have a survey, you can actually collect this and put it in some sign of uh, business intelligence system so you can uh, you know you can compile the data from there uh, we also have some built-in grammars so you know the example uh, pick a number zero to nine now uh, you know imagine the choice would be zero one two three four five six seven eight nine um, that's not too bad to do but imagine if you're asking someone to put in four digits uh, you know, could you imagine putting the choices as, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to, you know, 9,999. It's all of a sudden you have this huge application just to do that one simple thing. So we have some built-in grammars for digits. So now it could be four digits it's expecting, or it could be a range of digits, expecting four to 16 digits. Maybe somebody has an account number or something like that that has a range. Uh, so we have some built-in grammars like that uh, for digit collection. 
So outbound applications are, uh, it's probably the most popular use case for Tropo. Uh, some of our biggest customers are doing outbound. Um, and outbound is very easy. So uh, this kind of represents the, an outbound application. So it's going in reverse. Uh, each Tropo application has a very a long, unique token identifier. It's like a long alphanumeric string that's unique to uh, each application. Uh, and that's kind of like the, the key that, uh, that Tropo needs to go find your app. So you would send that, uh, that token identifier uh, in an HTTP host. And you would send that over to our REST API. It's like a URL, uh, api.tropo.com. Uh, so you send that along as a parameter. And uh, Tropo, once it sees that long uh, alpha uh, numeric string, it would uh, go find your application in that way and start running it in our scripting environment. In this case, you know, it would make an outbound call. You know, you know perhaps you have a, uh, something like a an appointment reminder, that's an easy one to do. So you have a doctor's office, they have a whole list of all of their uh, appointments for the day. The customer's name, their phone number, and their appointment uh, time. So you can have a web server on your side that has all of that inside a database. Uh, you could send that over to a Tropo script that has some variables just waiting for those things to say. And each request that you send would just represent an outbound call. Uh, so you can send out all the appointment reminders that you have for your office for that particular day. Two-factor authentications uh, for uh, banking or financial companies. This is really popular. Um, I mean, I'm sure most of you do uh, some kind of online banking. You know, you, know, it, you have a phone number associated with your account. Uh, so you log into your uh, online banking. You, uh, you know, maybe just in case your login got compromised, they want to send a code to your phone, you know, that's associated with the account. And then once you receive that code, uh, you type it into the website and then they'll give you your account information. So Tropo would be, you know, a Tropo application could be the one that actually facilitates sending that code to your phone. Uh, click to call applications. So you have a website. Uh, and just very easily, you want to uh, do you want to connect with an agent? Here, just type in your phone number here and click here, um, and then we'll connect you with an agent. And what uh, you can have a Tropo app behind the scenes that'll launch an outbound call to an agent, launch an outbound call to your phone, and then bridge those calls together. So this way, you, they don't have to uh, take a number off a website and copy it down or anything like that. Just with one click, you can be connected with an agent on your phone. So uh, again, that's a, a pretty trivial application to build with Tropo. So really here for outbound calls, we're just adding one more line. You know, call this number. And here in this case, we're just saying tag your it. Or it could be uh, a SIP uh, URI. So you can call any kind of SIP endpoint too. So uh, instead of a phone number, you can just put it in a SIP endpoint. And when the phone call is answered, it's just going to say tag your it. Now, if you sent a, uh, you know, phone numbers in an array or different destinations inside an array, what it's going to do, it's not going to send different calls. It's going to ring all of those phones at the exact same time. But the first one who picks up the call wins the call. So uh, like a use case that's simple for that, let's say that somebody here is trying to reach me, but they don't know if I'm going to be uh, at home or you know, in, my, in the office or uh, on my cell phone. So what they can do is they can put all three of my numbers in there. Um, it'll ring all three of my phones, but the, uh, the actual phone that I'm at is the you know, place where I'll answer, and then the other two destinations stop ringing at that point. So when you send it in an array, you can ring a whole bunch of phones, but only the first one it picks up will win the call. Now, it's not always practical to uh, hard code phone numbers in an app because then now you have a whole bunch of applications if you have to launch, you know, a thousand calls out. So what you would do is you would uh, set up a, what's called like a launcher application um, on your web server. So that would generate an HTTP uh, get or post. And what it can do is it can send parameters into a Tropo script that has some variables just waiting for it. Um, so... You know, in this case here, we have 
you know, the customer name, it's waiting for it in this part of the script, the number dial that you're actually trying to, uh, to dial. And these variable names are just arbitrary. You can name them whatever you want. But they you just have to make sure that uh, the parameters you're sending match the variable names exactly, or else they, they won't match up. So, so really, it's the automation is going to be happening on your web server. You know, you're going to be sending out a request for each phone call that you want to make, uh, but you can actually send along different parameters with each one of those requests. Um, so you can send 100 requests, uh, you know, very quickly uh, and blast out 100 calls. So as you can see here, you know, we're sending a post and the uh, the parameter uh, that we're sending is named whatever. But as you can see down here, our, uh, our script, it just says number to dial. So whatever doesn't match that, so it would never dial the phone. So you just have to make sure that it matches. So now if I just put whatever as my variable, that would work. So that would pass along to that. It just it wouldn't pass to it unless the uh, the parameter names and the variable names match, and it's case sensitive, so you just have to be careful there. Okay, so transfers and call control. Uh, so what I mean by a transfer is, you know, you have an inbound call that comes into you, and now you want to take that call and bridge it someplace else. It's just like using call. You know, so if you uh, take an inbound call and then it, you put this uh, line of script inside your code, transfer this, so it's going to take an existing call and, and bring it somewhere else. Same thing if you pass in an array. It's going to ring both those destinations at the same time, but the first one who picks up the call wins. So maybe you have a very small call center or something like that. You don't really have a big solution for it. Um, so you maybe have some a few agents on duty. You ring all the agents' phones at the same time, but one of the agents picks up, and they can help out that caller. Now, when you're doing a transfer, you know instead of having dead air uh, being there as the transfer is being performed, that doesn't really result in a very good end user experience. So what you'll want to do is uh, use the play value argument here. So now uh, you can see I put in just an, an audio file, an MP3. So now it can play an MP3 during the transfer, so the caller knows that the, the call is still progressing. You know, so again, a little bit better of an end user experience than just having dead air as the uh, transfer is being performed. You also see another argument here called terminator, and you'll see that in a few different functions. So that will stop whatever function is in process at that time. So if you wanted to originally get transferred, but then you change your mind, you know, you can just hit the, uh, in this case, the star key is what we set it to, and that will stop the transfer in its tracks right there. We also have right there the on timeout, which is a, just calling up another function. So if, if the transfer uh, just keeps ringing and ringing and ringing, no one picks up, eventually it's going to time out, and then you can bring them someplace else or maybe bridge to a call to a different destination altogether. You can also reject calls uh, very easily. So maybe you have a somebody that keeps prank calling you, or somebody that bothers you at all. Then and, you know you want to keep paying for these robo dialers that are calling you. So maybe you can uh, set up like a little like a whitelist or blacklist. So you know if the caller ID is equal to this, then reject the call, and then you don't get billed for the call or anything like that. So you know while Tropo is still performing some functionality there of reading the caller ID. We're not actually going to bill you for the call because only when the call is actually connected is when we start our billing. And uh, again, just as a caveat here, this for developers while you're just uh, testing things out, everything is free. So if you go into tropo.com today, get signed up for a free developer account. You can start using Tropo today to and, and do uh, you know you can call into your app as many times as you want, send a text messages. Now, if you want to make outbound calls, you know, you just have to ask permission from our support team. And we'll ask you what you want to do with it and where you're from. Um, because as you can probably imagine, you know, with a free environment like that, it could be ripe for abuse, which it's been done before because we used to give everybody everything all at once. Uh, so 
you know, somebody comes in and, all right, I think I'll blast out 10,000 marketing calls real quick and then, you know, for free and then just leave. So uh, we just want to make sure uh, before, you know, someone starts making outbound calls, you know, we can kind of vet out what they want to do with it. You know, if, it, if it's a web developer that says, hey, you know, I might have some projects down the road, but I really just want to try things out, that's great. We're, we'll be happy to do that. Now, redirect, you know, this is only for really a, like a SIP function. So you can, uh, and this would result in a zero uh, billing as well. So if you take an inbound call, well, you can automatically bounce it off and send it to a, uh, another SIP destination. At that point, Tropo would be completely out of the equation. Uh, but again, that redirect would result in zero billing. So you can just bounce it off Tropo, send it someplace else. Uh, very quickly, just by that one line. Okay. I know I briefly mentioned uh, caller ID. However, um, can we uh, explain some of these in a little bit more detail? So again, Trobo can read caller ID, and it automatically capture it in what's called current call dot caller ID. That all. Once you use that little uh, built-in variable there. Uh, you can uh, actually capture the uh, the number of the caller um, to do all sorts of things with it. So if you want to just log all the calls that came in that day, or in this case, we're only going to transfer the call if the uh, caller ID matches 407-555-0100. So if that would happen to be my phone number and I called in, it would say sending you to Adam, and it would transfer to his phone. I think that's Adam's real phone number, by the way. You can also set the caller ID into whatever you'd like. So instead of, when you're making an outbound call, you don't want it to make it look like it's just coming from Tropo, because then maybe your customers aren't going to recognize where it's from. Especially if it's coming from our US data centers, you know, you pick it up in Europe, it's just like, oh, or, you know, who's this US caller? I'm not picking this up. Uh, so you can set the caller ID to you know your place of business, so it looks so they can recognize it. They're like, oh, okay, it's a local call from this business I recognize. So just by uh, this argument here of the call verb, you know, caller ID, and you can set it uh, just like that. In the same way, inside a transfer, you can set the caller ID um, to you know to whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, it just has to be in a valid number format. The carriers won't deliver something that doesn't look like a real number. So if you just put, you know, one 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 one, they may not deliver that because it doesn't look like a real phone number. In recording, so this is a uh, you know a full voicemail application. That's the entirety of it. So you can see up on top, we're using the record verb. Leave your message at the beep. Press pound when finished. So now we have some arguments of the uh, the record function. So the beep equals true. You know we're going to play a beep as soon as that uh, prompt, the first prompt is played. You, know, you can see some of these other ones here, like a silence timeout. If if you don't hear anything from the caller within seven seconds, just stop the call right there. If you know people can just press the terminator function, that will stop the recording at that point record format that's going to uh, result the audio file into an mp3 it could be a wave file too and then um, you can ftp this uh, uh, the resulting uh, audio file to a storage server someplace so you can store that uh, recording someplace else so there's no extra cost when you're in our production environment for any of these features so really tropo can turn out to be a, you know a pretty cost effective solution for you know a voicemail uh, and even uh, full call recording, which I'm going to show you in a bit. So this would play back uh, a recording to a caller as soon as they say it. So again, a variable that we declared up on top called rec. We're going to record, leave a message. And as soon as that person records a message, it's just going to call back up that, uh, that variable rec.value, and it's just going to play back the message to the caller. Okay, so like I mentioned, full call recording. Start call recording, that's, that's the command you give it. And here, um, it would be sending that call recording, uh, in this case, to a web server someplace. 
uh, and now we're just asking for a survey. Uh, and as soon as that survey is done, we just do stop call recording. Again, no additional charge due to call recording. You know, we've seen uh, standalone call recording companies charge 10 to you know 15 cents a minute. You know, so it could be really, really expensive. So what they can do is they can, you know, somebody can build a call recording application on Tropo, you know, pay what three cents a minute or something like that. You know, that's our like our, our base rate, and then they can just mark it up and you know they can have their own call recording uh, you know business and you know and make a quite a bit of overhead on that. So the uh, so Tropo is actually a very very cost of uh, uh, a cost effective solution for call recording. Uh, so that's a really really popular one. Tropo also is part of the uh, service. It does text messaging, and really, it's the applications look very, very similar. But now we're just adding uh, these. Uh, just another inside curly braces. We're specifically saying network is SMS. So now it's just going to turn that voice call application into an SMS or text messaging application, really just by adding uh, that network inside the curly braces there. So that is it. If you tick that out, then it just turns into a voice application. And again, you probably want to send out a whole bunch of text messages at once. It wouldn't be practical to always hard code a number in, in your script. So you would want to send over parameters to define some variables that are already inside your script. So the very first text message that somebody sends into your uh, Tropo application can be captured by current call dot initial text. So it'll capture whatever that first person says, and you can do uh, you know the function based on that. And then the message we here are showing you a message shortcut. Uh, this allows you to very easily mix text messaging and voice calls inside the same application. So here, we have, thank you for your call. We're going to text you the information. And now, uh, we, we're using the message core cut, which is uh, essentially replacing the call, say, and hang up sequence. So really, it's just kind of taking those three functions and putting it in one. Uh, and this is going to just go to the text message. You know, Here's what you asked for. But you can still do some, some more stuff on the voice call after that. So maybe just in the middle of a call, you want to send them a text message, maybe just so they don't have to keep repeating some directions you gave them. Here, while we're on the phone, I'll make sure that you get this uh, sent by text. But then you can still have your voice application progress from there. Tropo also does uh, call conferencing very, very easily. So one line of code. So this is going to be your conference name. It could be digits. You know, it could have letters in it, whatever. So if we just had one line of code like this, everybody who calls that application is going to be joined into the exact same conference. However, you know, maybe you wanted to have multiple conferences going on, but you still wanted to have the same phone number. So. This is the entire conference application. What's your conference ID? And any four digits you dial. So I dial, I dial into this application, and I press 1111. And then you call in and press 1111, and we're, we're going to be in a conference together. You call in at uh, 1112, you're going to be in a different conference than us. So you know, one application, but you can have multiple conferences going on. couple uh, different arguments for the conference uh, function. A join prompt. You know, perhaps to say someone joined or, you know, play a tone or, you know, play a little audio file so you know when people are coming and going inside your conference. Very simple. Just join prompt and leave prompt. Just some simple arguments for the conference verb. OK, let's get uh, talk some advanced speech concepts. So if we put in here, you know, say, and we put 1, 2, 3, 4, that's going to just speak it out as the whole number, 1,234. 
But we can use uh, what's called SSML. And by doing this, we can use something called say as. So we can interpret it as, as digits. So using this, now it's going to take one, two, three, four, and just say it as digits. One, two, three, four. But you can also do it as currency. So it can be, you know, $12.34. It can be a phone number, you know, so you can say, actually say it as a phone number or time or date. So you can have those uh, interpret as either digits, currency, number, date, time, you know, whatever numbers uh, combination you'd like to do there. Prosody, you know, you maybe fine tune some text to speech a little bit. Now, just to take a little bit of a step back for best practices, you know, text to speech, I would say for, you know, voice applications, you. You kind of want to use them judiciously. If you have a, you know, a robust voice application and it's nothing but text to speech or computer voice talking, it probably isn't going to be the best end user experience. I know I wouldn't want to sit there and talk to a computer voice all day. So it's probably best to pre-record your uh, as much as you can. So it does still sound like a human, but you know, for an account balance, for example, you know, more dynamic prompts. You know, that's where you'd want to use text-to-speech, where it's not practical to pre-record your audio files. So now you can kind of fine-tune the, uh, the computer voice talking with prosody. In this case, where we can slow down the rate. So if we're slowing it down, you know, one potato, two potato, three potato, four, you know, we can kind of take it down to one potato, two potato. So when you're reading off something that maybe somebody has to dictate something, you could say that slowly. Or maybe you have a really, really long terms and conditions that you have to read off very quickly over the phone. So you can talk it really fast and da -da 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 -da, so you can speed it up fast so you can get those terms and conditions out of the way. Oh, Text-to-speech callback, uh, fallback. This is also another like best practice. Um, you know, maybe you have some audio files that are being played in your voice application, uh, but perhaps where the audio files are being hosted, uh, they're not available for some reason. You know, and if that, you know, if they're not available, then what? Your voice application doesn't work. So what you can do, if just in case that uh, audio file is not available, you can fall back to text to speech. So this way, you know, if, if that audio file can't be fetched, then the computer voice will kick in. So now your, your customers can still be serviced. You know, you can still have that application going. Uh, so if, if your audio files are unavailable, the, the, your application will still work. I'll, it probably won't sound quite as nice, but at least it'll still be functional. Now, grammars. If you look, uh, if you remember when we were talking about like the choices, red, blue, or green, you know, uh, perhaps you're gonna have something a little bit more complex than that. Maybe you have like a, you know, a, a, some kind of business search application, and you, they may be able to say, uh, you know, it could be dozens of cities or something like that. You know, you don't want to, you know, have all of those uh, different utterances that a caller might say just listing off inside of a tropo script, you might want to host that in a different script someplace else. Like the most popular uh, grammar uh, type would probably be like a GRXML. And I'm going to show you an example of what something like that would look like. I think that's coming up here. Yep. So like again, this is a simple grammar. The choices are, you know, department, sales or person, you know, so these are very, a very small subset of choices. So that's when you would, that's a, what's called a simple grammar, you know, where you, there's only going to be a few. Now, um, here, what's your destination? Well, geez, that could be anywhere on earth. Uh, so maybe you have a database that collects all of the, the major cities that are around the globe. So what's your destination, you know, going to Hong Kong or something like that, or, you know, we're going to Tibet, we're going to Florida, all different things that you can put in there. And you would host all of those cities or destination names inside a GRXML file. 
which looks just like, or something like this. So instead of, you know, numbers, you would have inside of these, like each one, a different destination inside there. Uh, so you can have this XML document hosted someplace else off of that, uh, that Trope will essentially be fetching uh, for your application. Now, when you're recording audio files, you know, a lot of MP3s that you have are, you know, uh, 320K bit, you know, stereo sound or surround sound. When it comes right down to it, uh, when you're playing it over the phone, it's going to be downsampled quite a bit. Um, so, for best practice, it's when you're recording audio file, you can want to record it in like a mono, you know, a very small 8 kilohertz, 8 bit ULA. That's the um, uh, that's native for telephone, and that's what sounds the best over the phone as well, and that's what uh, gives the best performance for Tropo. Uh, so if you know, just as a best practice, try to record these audio files in these formats. Now, I certainly wouldn't think that you were going to be remembering these, so now I'll take the opportunity to tell you that we have a ton of documentation online that's super helpful. All of these uh, samples I showed you, we have in uh, really easy copy and paste code samples. So what you can do is when you get signed up for tropo.com, you go right to our documentation section, you go into the quick start guide, and then it'll be presenting you with a bunch of different scenarios for applications. So look for the application that you want to build, grab the uh, code sample from there so that can be used as your template and then just kind of change things around. So you don't have to be this master coder to, to use Tropo. Copy it and, and then just kind of, most of this code is pretty human readable. So you can just kind of, you can kind of make out like, oh, okay, I see here, it's the first prompt being played. I'm just gonna change out these words a little bit and you could do it that way. A lot of times when I'm building an app, that's what I'll start with, you know, that's you know a good place to start. Now I have this little template to start with and then I can just change it up as I as I go. So um, when you go on to tropo.com into the documentation section, go on to the quick start guides. There's going to be code samples for uh, all five of the uh, languages that we support, you know, Python, Ruby, Groovy, JavaScript, PHP. Uh, they'll all be right there for you. So uh, the REST APIs, like for example, to start a new session, to launch a call, like I explained, you would hit our, uh, our session uh, API. You can also use our REST API for conferencing. So if you wanted to send a signal into the conference to maybe to mute a particular caller or all the callers except the speaker, um, or maybe you want to just inject an audio file very quickly inside of a conference. Um, you can also use our REST API uh, to provision phone numbers. So if you needed a phone number associated with your application, uh, you can make a REST call to our API to say, you know, assign a German phone number to this application, you know, or assign a U.S. number to this application. Um, so you can do that in an automated fashion. Uh, so, for example, uh, give you a little bit of a like a scenario. And imagine like uh, somebody who's like a power seller on eBay or another like auction site. You know, they they want to have like a, a number masking application. So they want people to be able to contact them to ask questions about their item. However, they don't want to give out their real phone number so people can just keep calling them up all day. So what they'll do is they'll set up very quickly a virtual Tropo phone number um, that behind the scenes is just transferring to their real phone. So they'll list that virtual number in their listing, you know, so people can still call them up and ask questions about that item. And then as soon as that item sold, you can take that virtual number down very quickly with a rest call, and then you can assign a new number for the next item that you're going to sell. So very quickly, you can set up these little, you know, little virtual call masking application, so people can still contact you, you know, without actually you having to give out your real phone number. So you can put it on a public listing, you know, without uh, fear that people are going to have your number and put it on some robo dialer and spam call you all day. Uh, 
Now, when you go on to the tropo.com site, you're also going to see another option there called Web API. All the examples I just showed you now uh, is uh, for uh, scripting API, which means that you know we can host uh, the script right with Tropo. We're rendering your code in our cloud. Now, Web API is really the model that I would say the majority of our competitors use. They don't really have a scripting environment like ours. So what that would mean is you would be running the application on your own web server. Maybe if you have a really tight database integration where you don't want to have to keep making REST calls back and forth, you, you, know, you can actually run an application on your, uh, on your own web server, and it would communicate with Tropo uh, via JSON. So again, JSON communication over HTTP to communicate with Tropo. Uh, however, you know, it doesn't scale as well uh, as scripting because let's just say you have an application that one day goes viral and now you have a bunch of calls that you have to serve. Well, maybe now that means that you, if the application is running on your own web servers, now you have to add more infrastructure, more servers, more, you know, things like that. And uh, so now we can, if you use scripting, it, everything scales automatically in our data centers. So you don't have to worry about adding more infrastructure to do that. Uh, so really, most of our large-scale customers stick with the easy way, which is scripting. Um, but uh, like I said, Web API does have its place if you need a really, really tight uh, database integration so you don't want to have to keep going back and forth. Uh, so um, I just wanted to kind of let you know what Web API was. So once you get onto the website, you'll see there's going to be two separate different offerings in there. And uh, you know, when you try to copy and paste Web API code, into a scripting app, it's just not going to work. So, um, you know, I do uh, recommend just starting out with scripting at first, you know, but for your advanced users, you want to try a web API, you can certainly do that. Uh, again, uh, everything is available right, uh, right online on our website, uh, tropo.com. Uh, we have an awesome support team there, too. They're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They will be there on Christmas. So we have a live chat open all the time. So when you first start out, if you don't know what something is or you have a question, any time of the day, just jump into the live chat. We have real support engineers that are not outsourced someplace that aren't real Tropo employees. These are actual physical engineers that are there all the time just to answer your questions. If you have a more you know, advanced troubleshooting thing, you can send a, a ticket to support at tropo.com, even if you're using a free developer account and haven't paid us anything. You know, we're gonna give you a, an answer in less than 20 minutes. So we're gonna give you really the same level of support as we do our, our paying customers, because we want everybody to get up and running. Again, we. We want to try to make this as developer friendly as possible and as easy as can be. So if something doesn't make sense to you, you're not alone. You know, we'll, we'll be there to hold your hand if you need be. You know, so we want to get you up and going. Uh, but um, just want to make sure that just want to put that in there, just to make sure that you uh, complete your online uh, uh, survey for this session. There's a uh, a lot of good things here to continue education. Again, I highly recommend going over to our quick start guide. Really, just try it out. Just copy and paste some stuff. It's free phone calls, you know, and free text messaging just to try it out. Um, you could try out our speech recognition engine. Try it out in the language, that, you know, your native language, to see how that works. We also have different dialects of English uh, for text to speech. So we have an Indian English, so we can so we can recognize the dialect better for you know an Indian speaking person or Hindi speaking person. The, um, we have some more learning labs available through DevNet. Uh, and we also, um, you know, you can follow Tropo on Twitter. Or you can follow me on Twitter, too. But I'm not very interesting. So just to let you know that up front. But uh, you, you're certainly more than welcome to. I got at least a dozen followers. Uh, but uh, you can also stay up to date on all things Tropo on our blog as well. So uh, are there any questions? Yes, sir. Oh, 
Okay, so you're asking, you know, it, 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 you, it, it, back in the early days, you had had an IVR to handle things, and now you're saying you're moving more towards what, like a website or a web portal? Uh huh. Yeah, and you know what? And that's a good question. Yep. Okay. Okay. Very good. He's asking for like a drag and drop environment. Yes. We actually have a partner that built one that using the uh, Tropo behind the scenes, so it's dynamically generating code, um, and that is called Zomnio, uh, Z O M N I O, and that's a drag and drop IVR system. So yeah, so I I yeah, if you don't want to really dig into code or anything like that, and you just want to quickly just do something and make very simple changes, so if you want to change one prompt around very quickly. You can use that, and basically behind the scenes, it's dynamically generating tropo code. So yeah, good question. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. Well, my name is Phil Belanti. Again, um, if, if you see me around, you can always feel free to pull me aside. I'd be happy to help you out. Um, but uh, I really appreciate everybody's attention today and joining my session. Much appreciated. Okay, you're welcome. Have a good day.